Play versus welcomes you in to the Pennsylvania Principals Association Finals for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Joining me is Orbital. My name is Bear Light. We get right into the action already <laughs> as Chambersburg E-Trojans and CMHS Evil. Uh, these two teams, Orbital, clearly ready to go. Oh, yes, they are. And it looks like they're actually doing a little bit of a button check here. So we have a little bit of time to talk about these teams. I mean, both squads have been running it up pretty well throughout the bracket. And I think that's the interesting thing as well with this, right? It's a little bit different format. Normally, when we see crews, it's uh, it, it's being able to fundamentally be able to win, not against just one opponent, but multiple. But in this format itself, we only have three members on either side. And the fun part about it is the best of five, you know, within the game itself. And I actually really, really like that fact. You are basically thrown into a blind matchup. And and pray that you're able to win that one out. Yeah, it, it all comes down to what, what characters do you use. The coach can even determine once we get to, to sets four and five, uh, do we toss in a certain player because they have certain characters? And is the other team going to, to play the one that I think that they're going to play? There's a lot of mind games that go into it. A lot of strategy uh, as far as even outside of the game, which makes it even cooler because of how intensive Smash matchups can actually be. Mm, and for me, that, to me, I actually really enjoy that because I'm a Little Mac player. Anyone that knows me, I play Little <laughs> Mac. That's all I ever play. So blind matchups are actually my favorite. You get kind of that feeling of, hey, I can take over if I can, if I get the right matchup. It's just, it, it makes my odds a little bit better. Granted, in this one, we see some kind of odd ball pickups here, and that's actually very, very enjoyable to me. Uh, I'm looking through some of them, and Raymond on the side of uh, Chambersburg is playing the likes of the Kirby, which is one that I have not seen very often. It's usually, to me, seen as a joke character. I hate saying that, but it is. Um, <laughs> it's not in the fundamental top echelons right now. We do see good players, but it can be difficult. So running something like that. On the other side, we even see a Banjo. Coming out for catch for CMHS, and that to me screams, let's have fun with it. Let's get silly, let's get underway. That's exactly right, and I do like that, right? Having these uh, out of pocket characters that you can use is super cool too. One thing that I noticed about CMHS Evil, and maybe one of the reasons why they're here in the finals, even Orbital, is the fact that all of them play Paulutena to some degree. Only V mains mm -hmm. Paulutena per se, but Palutena is so universal, almost feels like an all-around character, like a jack-of-all-trades, but uh, it's very good at countering just about anything you can throw at it. So to have all three members of your team being able to counter, I do like that from CMHS as well. This is going to be a fun one, and I love the fact that also you can't really tell which player is stepping up. That's the scary part as well, because you can't also predict what else is going to be in the back pocket. So, in this start here, it is starting to be a little bit difficult. Palutena already up about 81%, and that's a problem right now. Splatoon characters are always just very, very annoying to deal with. They're very fast, very quick, and can rack up damage. And then they have decent finishers like this. The setup is just so easy. A smash for one stock already down. Yeah, the it seems like it's going to be a bit of an issue here for the Palutena, especially when you can't kill quickly, uh, per se. That being said, I mean, the Inkling is very uh, very tough to kind of deal with, with its mobility, you know, on the ground, trying mm -hmm. to counter that and, and being able to match oh! it. It's very difficult, too, in that edge guard. Man, and before you know it, you're two stocks down. That's just unfortunate. And this is actually the good and bad part about this. That mistake normally in a crew battle, the stock difference would actually be a huge issue, and it'd be a massive boon to Chambersburg. The difference is that these mistakes stay within each game itself, and that's actually very favorable, I would say. You're actually very, uh, you know, okay if you lose out. Granted, if it gets worse or it gets better, anything of the sort can change that up, but I would say in this mistake, you're actually kind of okay with that first mistake here in game one of the entire series. So let's see what goes down here. Again, Esmond is looking pretty dang strong here on this inkling. One more hit. Should really do it. Already racking up another 80%, sitting on 123 themselves. Not really a big worry, though. You can sit there and go, hey, I got two stocks in the back pocket. I'm more than happy. As long as I get this last stock, I win this game for my team. A little bit of a spike as an up air will take it, and it will be the Palutena to win it out. I was just about to talk about how Esmond's been doing such a great job of uh, being able to time their jumps and switch it up, so that way the Palutena can't hit you with the neutral air. But then right when I said that, um, an up smash in, you're out of here. So uh, thus far, you know, it's been very clinical for Esmond, but at least you're able to answer back here and uh, give yourself a shot if you're CMHS evil. Uh, I think they've been doing a good job to try to handle things, and now because they've been able to make a little bit better reads, that's what's kept them in there at least this far. Oh, man, this is going to be a little bit of a tricky one as well. Esmond, though, is just chilling and saying, yo, let's roll it out. Get oh! the smash. And it will be Chambersburg, I believe, to go out with game one. Or at least I, I want to say like round one of game one here in yep. this best of five. That's a good point. Yeah, I think that's a good uh, terminology for it. I don't know if we've ever come up with that, but now we can say it. Uh, rounds are good. So, yeah, round one to uh, to this team, Esmond. 
do a great job to at least get Chambersburg up to a hot start. That's definitely making a statement to get the first two stocks that quickly against a Palutena can be a little bit more challenging, especially an Inkling who doesn't get a whole lot of love. I wouldn't necessarily call Inkling a character that's in the meta currently. And so uh, to be able to bring that back and see somebody who's so clinical with Inkling has always been interesting to me. And I love to see it here as well. Now, at the same time, you're not going to have that inkling to play out everywhere else. So for CMHS, you know that Esmond is out. And Esmond is very strong, it looks like. Uh, whenever I see a solo main, it's scary to see. It's very, very scary to see, but it also makes it very readable. You don't have that flexibility. Like now, uh, CMHS, you can kind of, I, I don't want to say technically, hide uh, the Mario, the Banjo, the Steve, or the um, other Mario. You know, there, there's just, well, I also love that fact, by the way, that both V and Armin are very much Palo and Mario only. But you can kind of hide, you know, exactly who's going to be coming out next and which of those character swaps are going to come through. Yeah, exactly. That's a solid point. Again, everybody playing Palutena at least has that in their repertoire arsenal for CMHS Evil, which, by the way, we want to highlight their coaches in between these matches, too, uh, between these sets, I guess you would say. Uh, what do we call them? Rounds. Rounds, that's what Rounds. we call them. So Chambersburg. Someone's uh, going to yell at me for that, <laughs> by the way. I'm sure there's actual terminology, and someone's going to be like, why did you say that? Like, and I here know, I am sorry. defending you. I know. How, how I know, I, right? I know. <laughs> but Chambersburg E Trojans uh, comes in. Max Gemelli is going to be the coach for them. So I want to show some love to being able to coordinate uh, these great players and, uh, and, and seeing them in the finals. But we can say the same with CMHS Evil. So that's Michael Seelhurst, uh, Andrew Harmon, and Brian Klebanski. Y'all are doing great jobs with your programs. Clearly, you made the finals here at Play Versus. That is something that you can hold high among everybody in your high school, not just the esports department. I think it's very cool uh, that you have the opportunity to play for this title. And even if you come up short, uh, you still have, you know, the mm. finals appearance to put in your back pocket. What are you seeing here, Orbital? I am seeing another Inkling come out here. And I think this might actually be like a replay. Is that is that what we're seeing here? Oh, it's like this... a best of three here. Yeah. Oh, best, that's, of... Mm. best of three within best of five sets, essentially. Ooh, interesting. Yeah. Okay, now I see what you're talking about. So my brain does not want to work properly. I uh, listen. I, I I hopped in a little bit last minute, so I'm a little bit foggy right now. I still got Madden on the brain. <laughs> That's fair enough. I think you're doing a great job. It, it, we're gonna figure it out along the way because not a lot of people realize. Uh, it's a little bit complicated, but we'll be able to talk you through the details. No problem mm. there. But again, same thing applies. This inkling putting up so much damage. Look at the 106 percentage versus Ed uh, versus what they've been able to throw at Esmen. Right now, though, they do get a lot of the percentage back, but still the damage has been done on this Palu. Oh, yes. And, and, and this is going to be the unfortunate downfall here is uh, this Palo Tena is not going to feel good in this matchup right now. You already know what happened. And you go back to the exact same Battlefield stage. It, it feels bad, right? Like, you can't really deal with it, and that's just going to be a quick smash. Instead of using the roller now, Esmond is utilizing a little bit of that stage power. And keep in mind, this is the Palutena also opting for the seven sets. They go back to back with a couple uh, a couple neutral attacks, nothing really big there. But it's just the damage racking up. Esmond already up at 75. I think this is a little bit higher than what it was before, so it feels a little bit different. A little bit of swab power attacks on either side. Smash is not going to work. Esmond's doing a great job to slide in, slide out, and, and keep away from this Palutena. So even if you want to throw your projectiles, you get in and be able to punish while she's throwing them out. But Esmond's also been doing a good job to get in close, get in tight, where uh, those, neutral, those neutral airs be able to get a, a hit before she's able to throw those out. So the timing is everything, and that's why Esmond's been so Ooh. effective. But look out again just trying to find an answer to this it's having difficulty there the throw with thumb might have knocked him off oh that's Ooh. a great follow-up and edge guard there and a good response from esmond uh, to at least get that stock even at two hmm I'm, I'm actually really liking this one. Remember the last time that we saw the Palutena lose out, it was because of an unfortunate uh, kind of SD there. So this time around, you don't want to let that happen. However, the Dodgers coming out here. Esmond going to try their best, but the grab holds on well and strong. 127 on that call, though. A simple attack will do the most. And you can see the setup with the roller trying to do their best, but Esmond's not going to be able to lock it down just yet. And you don't want to get too desperate. That's going to open up some opportunities for the Palutena to fight back. However, good tag with back here. Going to keep that Palutena up on the ledge. Grabs the ledge. Do you predict top or bottom? Him. No, you go with the straight away, get the grab behind, and now you're going to chase out in your own. Nice nair to go ahead and hang him in the middle, and all of a sudden, Esben is in stock threat. Yeah, CMHS now stepping up their game when it comes to uh, being able to get Esmond above you in that unadvantageous position, Ooh. especially against Palutena. Oh. Switches it up there, too. A good avoidance using the TP to get around him on back on the stage. Oh, there but you fall right to it. You felt it coming, and eventually Esmond does get it done. 
Oh, but you could almost trade one back. So remember, this is a big part for this Palutena player. It's a huge part if you can at least trade out that stock and get it back to at least neutral. However, Esmond is more than ready to try and take it fast. Normally, a player will actually stay back a little bit further. Whenever you're a high percentage, you just try and do chip damage. You can do that with the bombs, with the specials. Instead, Esmond trying to chase right in knows that even if you lose your stock, you already have a percentage lead. And that's a huge part to play for. Controlling center stage, blasting the Palutena sideways, and looks for the smash attacks, but it's countered by the Palutena smash instead. And you're looking for that final strike, but high guard puts you on the ledge, and that's a problem to be at. Another nair to get yourself back to safety. Oh, Esmond did such a good job to switch up to get back on the, on because Palutena has been doing such a stellar job to edge guard here. And so to get back on was huge, because you would have dropped this head here, plain and simple. It would have been a 2-0. I mean, it still can be. Let's be real. Oh, yeah. Especially the way that Esmond's been playing in another knockback but not far enough to throw palutina off so just kind of waiting for their moment to strike being so patient like we saw in that recovery orbital and still being patient here even though the percentages reach 150 each i mean remember that's that's a fake 158 on esmond you got a whole other stock to play for that's which right. is why i was still kind of saying like that's going to be fine and there it is a spike down to finish it off truly esmond wins it out there you go you throw out esmond and queerly one of one of this is one of the strongest in play versus you get to the finals uh, based on who you have through your repertoire and Esmond showing up why they've been able to steal so many sets throughout the entirety of the season. Esmond definitely a strong player overall. A very good battle though. Um, you know, not sure because everybody on CMHS can play that Palu. Not sure. We'll get to the details on who that was specifically from their team. But either way, I mean, they did a good job to try and counter it. But the way that Esmond was able to work, the way they were able to uh, space just a little bit different and be able to, to break the spacing, really, and not uh, allow any space for the Palutena to go to work was a big reason why Esmond walks away uh, with Chambersburg. Eat Trojans up 1-0 in sets. Now that we have the set complete, now we can describe that that is one set out of a best of five. And now uh, we have a new player from each team that has to come in here for the next set. And then the third players, whoever they don't choose this time, will be in the third set uh, as well to see if Chambersburg can maybe get three in a row or if CMHS can get that answer to force at least a game four or a set four rather. I think it's very, very doable. The adjustment factor is gone. Uh, you know the inkling isn't going to be there. And quite honestly, taking a look at the rest of the players, I mean, Sephiroth, Byleth, Kirby, these are all, uh, I want to say, relatively slower in pace. Now, yep. not slower in attack power, but inkling is well known to be a faster character, well known to be a little bit more coordinated on that. The rest are a little bit of a sword heavy. You know, Sephiroth and Byleth, well known to be more extended ranges with that sword. And then for Denzel uh, on Chambers, uh, Chambersburg's side, you got a Luigi Mario Olimar. Like, these are not known to be speeding across the stage at any point. You can afford to kind of pace yourself. And I love the fact that you pointed out that Palutena is good all around because the opposite also holds true. Even though you're good all around, you don't really have any strong matchups, which is where the inkling was allowed to take control of that center. Right now, if CMHS do want to play towards it, you could actually go the Palutena this time, and I think you're actually going to have a lot better time with any of the other matchups, and that is what I'm going to be really curious about. Agreed. Yeah, we talked about it plenty, which was like the sliding in, sliding out to the Palutena, timing your uh, timing your jumps, uh, and making sure that that neutral air can't come back to haunt you. But now, you're right, there's lack of mobility. I like that you pointed out the Olimar as well, because he doesn't move at all, basically. He just lets his Pikmin go to work. Um, so if that comes out, you have a Every, a clear every Olimar main <laughs> just yelled at you, by the way. Every <laughs> single one out there. All like 10 of them. Someone else's, you know. I know, yeah. Uh, that's an <laughs> over-exaggeration, all right? In fact, the, the key to playing Olimar is to move at timely times uh, when they're dealing with the Pikmin. So I get it. Yes, I uh, definitely dropped the ball on that one. But either no, way, <laughs> uh, we can speculate on matchup, but we have uh, it coming up as far as who's going to be next for each high school. And uh, also, you know, we what comes into factor, the stage. But right now, we've really been on the, the um, similar stage types, at least throughout the entirety of the first set. We'll see if that changes here as it looks like maybe some more tests here or potentially drop in gentlemen's agreement. We'll get you the details on that, too. Mm -hmm. That's just another button check. Keep in mind, even though the tags are somewhat the same, the players have actually shifted each time. That yep. is the main thing to kind of keep in track. That's actually why we have button checks, and it's one of the best parts. I think you also get to kind of take a little bit extra time to get yourself ready for the match, and I think that's more important than, say, a regular crew battle. Keep in mind, in a regular crew battle, the first match would have actually gone very differently. I mean, Esmond got a fantastic start. You go ahead, take, what was it, like two stocks over your opponent and everything of that sort, but... 
when it comes to the button check in in this match you need all the time to kind of recompose yourself you can also use this time to kind of mentally go over what we're going to see next that time i think we saw luigi versus uh i think it was a mario coming out i, I caught it for like half a second but i did see luigi out there and and for me i think that is going to be a big test fundamentally they are different from each other the brothers had different very uh, varying play styles of course but it will be a much slower pace game i know that much as as this point is coming out I'll be very interested to see how it plays out. So Esmond would uh, kick off a, an incredible start for Chambersburg, and it seems as though Denzel would be the play, and sure enough, that's what we see. Uh, Esmond actually being Denzel, as Orbital pointed out. They're using the same account here, but that would be Chambersburg on that left side, so that checks out, and CMHS with the Mario on this side. So yes, the brothers go to work here, and a, now eyeballing Orbital, the CMHS squad, um, throwing juggles, being able to catch Luigi, r right? That mobility is not going to be the same as the Inkling, and so maybe you can catch them with those quick combos. You know, Mario, another all-arounder, just like we saw from Palutena, so, uh, you know, there's not something that they're very good at, but if there is for Mario, it is juggling uh, Luigi in as much as possible to find the most success. Mm -hmm. Going to be a little bit of test of strength, if you will. But at the early start here, it does feel like Chambersburg just have this upper hand in control. The brothers duking it out over, I'm not sure what, but without that center stage platform, this is another variation, by the way. Uh, this is, uh, you know, only the two platforms on the lower edge. And honestly, both of these characters do like to play vertically as well. They like to try and go high if they can. Mario has a lot of good options for it. But with the power, with the 144, it's more than enough for Luigi, and that's going to be, uh, I believe, Denzel taking a little bit of a stock lead. Yeah, and being able to run out with it, too, when you get that for a stock, and now you're putting up even more damage, too. I mean, in my opinion, Orbital, I do favor the Luigi pick over the Mario, uh, just because you have some extra firepower, if you will. I do like the, his projectiles a little bit better, too, but it's all about personal preference at the end of the day, and right now, um, putting it to good use is uh, Denzel, which I believe, uh, 100%. It's got to be, right, based on the pick itself. Uh, but they're doing a great job so far to take, really establish and build off of what uh, your teammate was able to accomplish in that first set. Mm -hmm. And you got to kind of ride that momentum and hopefully have a little bit of time. And right now, with the point, uh, the percentage area, uh, right now, I think Denzel is more than happy about the current situation. That's going to be another grab. And it's set up to the spin. Wow. Stock off the top edge. And that's the other side of the battlefield. The, the height is actually quite low comparatively. So able to grab two stocks and you carry on with 106. Of course, you set yourself on the ledge. And it feels like this Mario player is going to try their best to take at least one. Good smash. That's what you needed there, right? It was a quick answer in, in one that didn't seem like it was going to, um, you know, kill at that point in time at that percentage but the back uh air is just too much and look at that quick work absolute quick work here from denzel able to just launch them off the edge to take the first game of sorts here in the set it was just clinical from the get-go and even though there was a response pretty quickly from cmhs it was a direct answer from chambersburg just establishing this level of dominance early in this finals it's been great and, and refreshing to watch a team uh, execute to this degree I love watching some of those up specials go down. The up B was just perfectly timed. That's one of the kind of cheeky things about Luigi and Mario as well. I believe Mario has a smaller one, maybe not as strong, but that, that, that little ping that you heard in the back of your ear, for those that may be tuning in for the first time, if you hit on the sweet spot at the very start of the attack, it does massive amounts of damage. And so Luigi is able to launch with very low percentage on the opposing side. That's why we saw this kind of launch up. And it's also, there are possibilities on the side Bs as well. Luigi has what's called a missile. It's the funniest thing in the world if it lands. It's massive damage all the way around. So honestly, overall, very well controlled at the current moment. I have no reason to doubt that Chambersburg mechanically look like the stronger team here in this matchup. Yeah, I agree with you. And here, you know, we have two Mario slash Palutena players that it could be, potentially. Um, either Armin or V is who we're speculating here at this point, as far as he's yep. with CMHS Esports. Uh, or, or CMHS Evil, rather. So these two players, Armin and V... Um, they could switch to whoever it is. They could switch to a Palutena here. Does it give you any kind of a competitive advantage here uh, to go Palutena versus Luigi? We mentioned uh, her vers versatility. It's still an all-arounder, just like you would find with Mario. And in fact, uh, you can really cause so much more damage and perhaps, you know, it, uh, find more uh, kill shots as well a lot easier. Maybe it's uh, worth it to switch, even though they might disagree, seeing as they're coming back out with that Mario. I, I think you would be... 
I think you would be a little bit remiss to, to try and go for that. The main thing is, uh, I, I think Palatina, you would be able to be granted a lot of space, which I do agree with. I think right now, whoever is piloting the Mario, I, I think just wants to get up close to personal. Feels a lot more comfortable with this set, especially in this matchup. But you see the quick spike. What a turn and a half. Stock gone in half a second. There it is. You're right. We said the answer a little bit earlier on. But yeah, that, that move can kill so quickly in... Being able to get in, cause that damage, and now, you know, you finally put Denzel in a spot where they're uncomfortable, where they're going to have to be battling from behind. But they're doing a good job to try and accomplish that. But look at the exposure here. That is such a Ooh. clinical move and able to take a couple of stocks right off the bat. You hate to see that for, from Denzel, though. I mean, this is a hard shake up here, and that game one feels like it was just a little bit of a timer and a read. Just, hey, I need to get my bearings. I need to be a little bit more in control, and now you fully have it. Look at the combo and carrying to the top ropes, and the stage as well causes a difference. Remember, there are now three platforms, so for this Mario player, it feels a little bit better. You can go on the vertical range, however, fight back right now from this player. Denzel going to try and grab a couple stocks in their own. A little bit of fireball to slow down the momentum, and it looks like you're still able to get back. Now controlling. Where do you go? No grab to come out here, and it is going to be a Smash missed. Oh, that could have been the end there, but the water to try and hold him off here. Good little roll into the neutral strikes. And this is a play for it. It feels like up smash to go ahead and give Denzel a stock. Up until that one little point, I thought Armin, it's crazy how just one little thing, like the shield timing that we've seen from Armin has made all the difference in order to land those first couple of stocks that they've been able to take. Uh, then they just had hit it, or at least attempted it a little bit too late on that last little sequence. Uh, so it was Denzel able to at least get that before uh, all damage could be done. But a good ledge trump and trying to guard that too. But the, the floppy fish, if you will, to try to get that going from Luigi uh, was able to get back before anything happened. I'm, I'm surprised they weren't able to take advantage of that too and, and maybe expose that a little bit. Uh, but Armin not able to accomplish that, but still you're at 121%. This has been a much better performance from Armin overall. Mm -hmm. Such a massive performance difference, and I think that's also going to speak to their flow and their, uh, I want to say, mental strength right now. Playing on yeah. your own account, you feel great and all that stuff, but the big thing is trying to keep space. However, you ran right into a grab, and that's going to be the big shakeup. However, punch to the high ground. This time, the ceiling's a little bit higher with the triple platforms, and so you don't go down just yet. Denzel going to try their best. Look, good low kick onto the forward, smat, uh, forward air. And now you're going to look for a little bit more playing off the side of this stage. And that's kind of the messy time. However, a low kick takes it. And Esmond ties things up in stock. But 139 is more than a dangerous amount to be in. Yeah, good, uh, a good effort to at least keep this at a, a place where you can make the comeback. But there it there is. It I is. Sure enough, just drop down it too. I like the utilization. Again, Armin using uh, a little bit more of the platform to drop in and change things up, switch it up. And again, that Mario comes back out even stronger. Armin did a great job to adjust. And now the ball is in your court. Uh, as far as Denzel goes, you know, you, you got that first set and, or sorry, you got that first game. You're feeling really strong, feeling confident that you could just 2 0, just like the first set was done. But uh, Armin says, not so fast, my friend. I loved every single moment of it. It almost felt like a whole different person playing, and the confidence boost that you get with that extra kind of rung up above is great. Now, in the same vein, Denzel, I think, was just more taken aback. In terms of speed, I think Mario outpaces a little bit. You can see how the Luigi is a little bit more floaty. You're also realizing, if you're Denzel, you got a lot of those stocks earlier in Game 1 in a little bit, uh, I want to say, cheesy way. They were not explicitly nice. Uh, there were some combos, but that third stock that you got felt a little bit cheesy. So now you're realizing, hey, those same tactics will not work this time around. I want to see an adjustment. I want to see the understanding that you're not going to get the same uh, kind of pieces and opportunities that you had in game number one. Maybe also change it back to a uh, battlefield of your own choosing. Instead of the three platforms, go back to two and maybe see if that works. Yeah, exactly. And, and Armin, you got to be proactive. You can't just assume that the way that worked last game, you know, is going is to work the same. I, I love the shield timing. I do. But now you just allow yourself, if you were to go back and, and try to, you know, play the same positioning and try to, to hit those shields same time, the issue with that, is at that point in time that's an easy just roll across and, and be able to to maybe land a, a back air or something uh a, like of that nature in order to like just time it right and, and be able to expose that so i think armin needs to be proactive uh you don't need to switch your play style completely there's a reason why you won that game right within mm -hmm. this set but um what you want to do is make sure that you switch it up enough so that way uh you're not just waiting back if they adjust to this right off the bat that you're not two stocks down before you figure it out 
A little bit of a difference. The town coming in from Animal Crossing, and this is going to actually be a pretty big shakeup. I believe the platform in the middle is a much different story to tell, and instead of having those variables on the edges, you have a center stage platform, so it draws a lot of the attention much closer to each other. There's not as much room to kind of uh, diverge away, so the fight being brought much closer feels like it's favoring the side of Denzel. You can already see a nice a little uh, percentage lead, but a draw right back as Armin is going to try and fire back from side to side. Armin feels much stronger in the combo game. Yeah, that's that's right. And it, it's been starting up since the last game as well. That's a good switch up too. And look, uh, the down smash there from Luigi was able to, to push it forward. So Denzel getting right back to work like we saw them in the first game. Well, the down tilt did not land and that allowed them to kind of step into as the Mario. Now a uh, down oh. tilt, down aerial and a good couple of catches that as they try to recover. This edge guarding has been impressive and clinical here for the Mario. It has, but it's not enough. Remember, if they are still up. Denzel is more than alive right now. Now you get to roll out 100 apiece and then some. So these should be the finishes. No misfire to be had, so you do short change it a bit, which keeps you safe. And you're going to drop low, but attempt to grab his bow shield up. Neither wants to break it, but you roll right into the neutral. So Armin with the three piece combo says, Yo, watch me. Up smash though. Uh -oh. Esmond catches him on the back edge of the backswing. That's crazy. Denzel hanging in there. Even though you felt like you were uh, kind of handcuffed off the side, not allowed to get the chance to get back on. You've been edge guard guarded pretty strongly, but they've been doing a good job Even if you have to resort to the green missile, which I guess is the purple missile based on this uh, skin <laughs> But either way, you know when you're forcing that it's always dangerous like cringe It's very difficult to get back on the edge, but they did not only did that but were able to take that stock as well and this leads into a dangerous spot now. It's actually Armin on the back foot. Projectile grab instead. Catching Armin a little bit off guard. Breaking out the shield early. Gives you a little bit of spot of trouble. And you catch him in Ow. neutral center stage. Stock back 152. Doesn't matter. This is Denzel playing with extra time and a half. So all of that work, that extra work that you did to uh, change up your style and look again, the shield is so low even when you get to it. That shield pressure has been everything right now for Denzel to get back here to this point in time. Still not down, 172%. And that's where an all-arounder can hurt you, especially <laughs> when, you're trying to find, <laughs> when you're trying to find ways around it. They just haven't been able to do that yet. Mm -hmm. it, it's and you can see here the reason that the edge guard doesn't really work is honestly Denzel is actually playing very high so those water spots don't push you as far away and because you can reapply that misfire every time it works well that missile on the side feels great however a spike on the bottom is not gonna be teched out what a sock to be had Armin breathing a little bit of sigh of relief but you got to do that two more times yeah exactly and at this point you're already at 56 percent so it is an uphill battle but definitely not impossible especially you know Mario known to be that combo uh, heavy character that you can really support take them by surprise but after the first, first couple of games it'll be very difficult to catch them by surprise but those are the combos i'm talking about you see the couple of up arrows in a row to at least get them started and that's the difference between the stage factors you don't have that extra platform to kind of combo off of we talked about you know mario can carry you from side to side but it is Denzel to kind of play a little bit slower. Playing underneath this platform as well leads it to a little bit of a high-rise vertical angle. The Luigi allows so much value. And look at that. Using the plunger to keep Armin at bay. And is now going to try and go high. But Armin is able to grab onto the low. Just neutral ground itself. However, the grab is not going to do too much. Spin not going to finish off that stock. And honestly, Armin firing back so, so well. But how much are you actually going to get another kick on back here? You saw safe, but oh. another tornado in response. Denzil is inches away from taking this game. A grab back throw, throw backwards. Armin trying to keep them at bay with the water spout. Fully charged fire, and you're safe once again. You roll into it, shields out. Little bit of a running punch. No smash to be had. And it isn't going to be the stock either. And able to at least keep alive for now, but that's uh, for oh. how much longer here at this point. Lots of shield pressure coming. Armin's handling it well, though. It's keeping cool, calm, collected, but you needed that back throw to to really work. That grab and throw did not quite land it at high percentage. It could be oh, so deadly. Well at least the up smash is able to do that and, and conquer that in the meantime. 135%, so we're still at one stock apiece, but Armin's still a long way to go here. Trying to pressure was looking to get a little bit risky there. I saw him try to think about it, maybe a down smash and a spike, but at 11%, I don't think that would have counted either. But look how well they're handling this too. Armin will stay alive for now. 
Very nice kick as well, realizing that, hey, for Denzel, you don't actually have to go big. You can look for the smash, but the Tornado is more than enough. That's the percentage game itself. As soon as it turns that last stock, you can see no reason to get big, no reason to get fancy. Go for the simple that you know will hit. So now Chambersburg E-Trojans, they're one set away from winning the Pencil, uh, Pennsylvania Principals Association Finals here uh, for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate already. They've done a good job to position themselves well. You got to credit Armin, though. And, and I would not, if this goes to, if they're able to force a set four, would not hesitate to go back to Armin because in that situation, I thought they played very well. I thought they adjusted very well. They took that second game of that set, and we were starting to have that conversation. It was just a little bit of a slower start for the uh, for the third game in that set for Armin. But you saw how far they were able to pull back in that one to at least make the conversation about a potential for that Mario landing. But that being said, couldn't quite get it done. So again, you got to credit Denzel for getting the job done there and putting Chambersburg E-Trojans at match point in Orbital. Now we're talking about us knowing who's going to come out next. We've got Raymond for the side of Chambersburg E-Trojans, uh, which will be that Seth, uh, Byleth, or Kirby. And then on the other side, Cash, the Banjo and Kazuya, Steve, or Palu uh, for the other side. So we can start talking matchups. No, we can't. No, we can't, because each of them had three characters that they want to play. There is no talking <laughs> just yet. I love the speculation. Fact so much. <laughs> this is what I, I love the fact. And, and, and again, this is one of the fun parts as well. You leave the players with the most variability to their uh, to the character pool to last, and it does give you a little bit of functionality difference. Honestly, though, I would sit there and say, I'd love to just see the banjo. I don't think there's a lot of people that play against it and know how to play against it. So for cash, it wouldn't be a bad one to pull out here. At the same time, if you want to try and neutralize that, you could go for a non-swordsman. For Raymond, you could go for the Kirby. I know I said it's a joke character, but at this point, with how long some of these matches are going, you can utilize that float utility to play much longer game and wait for those opportunities. And so far, Chambersburg have looked more mechanically inclined each time. They feel better and better. And so for Chambersburg, I'm kind of sitting there going, you know, maybe you don't have to wait so much. Go for the Kirby, have a little bit of fun with it, and try and win from there. All right, Raymond, you heard what Orbital would like to see. I've only, we've only seen them on it once. However, now you're in a position where you're up 2-0, right? Uh, and Raymond now a chance to close out. So maybe a little bit of cheese, all right, from the Kirby. I don't hate that idea. I don't because, you know, that you come out expecting to, to have a, a brawl v. brawl or at least a 1v1 on your main characters and to throw like a, a curveball, which you don't see very frequently in the Kirby. I mean, Raymond, it's possible. I still see Sephiroth coming out for, for Raymond just because it's been played uh, pretty consistently. Plus, uh, packs a heavy punch. Now, Sephiroth doesn't get exactly a whole lot of love in the meta these days, but that does not mean that they don't pack that heavy punch. They have one of the longest swords I've ever seen in my lifetime. Um, so they have the range, and as long as they can space well with this one, if Raymond, uh, there's a reason why they have Sephiroth as their main, is because they can space so well and because they can utilize uh, that spacing. So I like that no matter what uh, Cash would throw at you here. I think it's just going to be a fight either way. At the yeah. end of the day, it's just going to be a little bit spicy. I know that, you know, we should probably go with what they played most. I just, I play Little Mac. At the end of the day, I do whatever <laughs> I want, and I want the players to do whatever they want yes. as well. So we'll see what they throw down. At the same time, there's a lot of weight on the back of Cash's back right now. You have to win this set and quite, or, or this, uh, yeah, this set. And I would honestly sit there and go, how are you actually going to deal with that? Because you are just sitting there going, hey, there are going to be problems, but there it is. The Banjo comes out, one of the most played coming out as well. So, Cash versus Raymond pretty much here for this series. One chance here, Raymond's to close out again. Cash needing this one. A big start would be necessary. If you go down one in this set, it's very, very difficult to kind of bring a mentality where you can get it back here. Um, but right now, spacing here against the Banjo-Kazooie, who could be very well playing as uh, zone, uh, as a zone character with a lot of the projectiles you're able to throw out with Banjo-Kazooie. But all right now, I mean, they're getting the blunt end of that sword here, Orbital. Mm -hmm. And honestly, we mentioned this. It, it feels like the side of Chambersburg just generally have a much stronger balance. Early combos opening things up for them. 
Of course, this is the other side of Banjo-Kazooie. You can be a little bit annoying. You can be just extremely uh, utility dependent. And it works wonders, of course, when you get into the mix, it's the other side of it. So, for cash, you are playing on borrowed time a little bit. Uh, 143 is very much kill threat range. And you see the charge up coming in for Sephiroth. You go ahead and kind of slash the air. And now jumping in front, no platforms to play for. So, you got to play up close and personal Bomb comes out here, and it looks like Cash is able to play with the wind as well. Yeah, they've been hanging in there. Has been being able to at least utilize some some movement mechanics that is. have been helping out. But uh, again, that smash was coming is inevitable. And right at the edge of the sword, which is where you do not want to be, especially against the Sephiroth here, uh, to launch them off the edge, get that first stock in hands, and force the hand of Cash, who knows that this is feels like a must-win game. And if I'm their, their teammates, I'm cheering them on for the sideline. I'm saying, well, yep. let's go. You drop the first stock, but you're at, you've got the 106% on the other side. Let's go ahead and get this next stock, and let's get going uh, in a positive uh, state of mind here. Mm. Unfortunately, that mental can sometimes just not work in your favor. Reality sometimes has a different story to sell. And quite honestly, once you reach about that 50-60, that's already a significant lead. 46, though, on the edge, yeah. I would say. Yeah. For the likes of Raymond, you're going to be saying, okay, Listen, I can do enough now with that low percentage. No real combos are going to come out. I just have to avoid a lot of the projectiles. And you can play without that range of value. However, you're trying to chase in, losing about 21%. And then eating a side B feels bad as well. So, looking at that difference. What a roll. Cash. Cash is in the money twice they were able to do that that was such a huge sequence in another dash all right now you found something that worked here now you found maybe the achilles heel of raymond at least in this match obviously i don't encourage doing the same move over and over again but if it's working and you take a couple of stocks that's good news too but you don't want that move to scale out but it's not right now it's landing every single time orbital you're not even worried about the actual stale out. There are uh, there are things in place so you can't spam some of those abilities or some of those attacks the same way over again inside of Super Smash Brothers. But with the variability, really, you're just trying to create enough space. You're trying to keep this Sephiroth a little bit out of uh, their element. And I think it's working wonder. Triple platform now inverted. And, of course, it's going to be uh, Raymond to try and play on top of those. But that's going to be a slash oh. knockback 128, though. This is danger territory. And then some cash wants to win this out. Yeah, absolutely. You, you feel like you need it. Oh, Ray miss. Raymond found it right in the wheelhouse for that last there pick, but is. then you jump right into it. Well timed, well executed, and hopped in at the exact uh, right moment. Is Cash able to land the first one? We said they need it. And even though behind in that first stock orbital, that did not bother them, or at least it did not seem to bother them at all. And CMHS, well, that's not their first game in hand. They did win one in the second set, but it is their first lead within a set to gain that first game win. So it's a first hot start that you'll see and cash in the moment where you need it the most. And I mentioned, I think playing against a banjo is very difficult if you're not used to it. And you could almost see that Raymond not respecting that almost certain kill threat combo to come out here. You lost your second stock off of that. And honestly, I don't think you're gonna make the same mistake again. You're gonna sit there and go, okay, what can I really do? How can I avoid that? Well, one, don't get hit by the combo, right? But yeah. two, you you also kind of know what to expect. You can see the swap between the projectile style versus the up close and personal. And I like that variance, but for cash, a little bit more weight on their shoulder. They have to be able to interchange that depending on what comes out next. And obviously, I don't think you're gonna get town and city again. So whatever stage you do get, gotta be ready for it. Yeah, exactly. More um, more of the platforms mean probably less utilization or at least the ability to utilize that side smash that we saw so many times come out from uh, from the banjo, from Cash. Cash, uh, an excellent job to at least expose one place where Raymond could be a little bit stronger. But I think that, you know, now that Raymond's seen it plenty of times, that'll allow him uh, an adjustment. Raymond's too strong a player to be able to do that over and over again and get away with it. And it does leave you kind of vulnerable on the other end. There's quite a bit of lag. So if if you don't miss it uh or if you miss that side b or if you're able to just shield it off from that side smash then you should be able to cause a whole lot more damage and get them when they are still trying to recover from a miss but i, I think it really caught raymond by surprise because of how long it lasts on that side smash they did try to shield it a couple of times but then they caught the uh, tail end of it and so this time they if they learn from their mistakes hold it the shield a little bit longer then it's a quick turnaround or even a quick grab and toss them off backwards uh, off the side of the stage so there's so many things that could play into raymond's favor if they play their cards right and of course you don't have to be i would say too overly worried 
about this matchup. I don't want to say that yeah. because, you know, Raymond wants to finish this off 3-0. They want the easy championship run. They want to make it look clean. You have your teammates to fall back on. I would quite honestly say Esmond and Denzel looked amazing in their matches. And quite honestly, it's uh, it, it to go to a game four is a little bit of a scary threat to be had. You're kind of sitting there going, okay, how am I going to do this? How am I going to fight this? It's at that point, it's a game of keep away. <laughs> you're you're actually <laughs> looking a little bit different. So if Raymond loses this, you're not overly concerned. Uh, I I hate saying it. I think just the other players looked a little bit better right now in this series. So it's like, you know, you're not playing with as much pressure on the back of your head. Now, for Sephiroth, I do expect to see a little bit more neutral ground. I think the platforms helped a little bit too much on that town and city. So I do expect to go to a little bit more, uh, I, I want to say, static platforms instead where you can kind of predict how often that stage is going to be a set in stone. Yeah, that's yeah, exactly. That's part of it, right? Raymond will be uh, a couple of stages will be striked, but they will be able to choose from the list that remains. And so you, you get to pick a favorable stage here and uh, which allows you to, to get a little bit more of that spacing that was taken away. That's one of the biggest things we highlighted prior to this matchup orbital for good reason. There's a reason why the side smash worked is what I'm getting at. And when it's in close, you know, for a fact, no, um, by the way, yeah, Final Destination is their choice here. And uh, and, and so Banjo-Kazooie, their side uh, smashes, you know, being able to, to locate those will be incredibly important because you can feel handcuffed. You really can once they come at you uh, and break through that spacing that you want to create as a uh, Sephiroth. Let's see what else they can do right now on this stage. I mentioned it. Oh, the good grab of the coconut feels good. Uh, but this is uh, this stage is also a favorite of mine. I love just the simplicity of it. Zero stage impact. No other platforms to play for. Literally on the ground. And you get to kind of uh, deny these other tools. However, the range, if you're allowed to set up on the utility of those projectiles, uh, you can use it to your advantage. So Cash is trying to start that immediately. But a quick draw in puts both between 70 and 85. Now 99 on the Sephiroth. Scary, scary position to be in. Give Cash all the credit in the world for being able to break into uh, you know the, the spacing. I continue to say it, it because it's true. Side smash works. Did not take the stock, but Orbital is still counting them up in multiple aspects of this too. The projectile oh. switch up as well, but a good turnaround. There you go, Raymond. I love to see that from Raymond being able to turn around and get that first stock. I think it was sorely necessary. Starting to get a read on what Cash wants to do. I mean, can't read it perfectly, and that's still stock for stock. Only 33% here on Cash's second. And I think you're still pretty happy. However, a nice little charge up. Puts you at 60. No touch so far. And now a bomb comes out. Grab to hold on to Banjo. And Banjo playing on the ledge right now. Zui in the back pocket just going, yo, let me help out. But you miss up. Feels oh, no. bad, man. Another stock loss of a situation that probably shouldn't have happened. Yeah, likely not. Cash will try to throw that into the back of their, or try to leave their mind there. I mean, you can't linger on that too long, but yeah, it's a bit of a mistake here. Again, you you got the first one in hand, though, as far as uh, the games in this set go, but it's not looking good for this one, too. Raymond says, if you're going to, uh, you know, mess up a little bit, I'm going to take advantage of every mistake that you make, too. So credit uh, where credit is due for Raymond, who's been a lot stronger in this one, too, able to answer back. Kind of reminiscent of the opposite, maybe a mirror of what we saw in the last set, Orbital. And right now having trouble here is the Banjo and Kazooie, especially when the projectiles will land, too, Oh, it was, it was dangerous using that double jump, but they weren't hitting the process and it allows the Banjo-Kazooie back on the stage. And I like the fact that you use that bomb to get a reset on your jumps and on your up Bs and just that little extra damage tap. However, look at those coconuts just keeping you at bay. But you're trying to play as far as you can. We know that Cash has the ability to break back a couple stocks very easily, but you have to be aware of the differences that'll be coming out here. This is going to be playing with a stock advantage, meaning Raymond can do pretty much whatever you want, but that's smash that you want. No longer extra stock, but 140% to play with Sephiroth. Going to try and slice and dice their way to a little bit of bear meat. Grab, hold it down, oh. down throw, easy setup, but the damage is racks it up pretty far. No setup for a final slash. Platform keeps you on the ledge. Edge guard not really going to hold on. Grab coming out of cash themselves, and you're back to center stage. Yeah, and I like, you know, the Sephiroth's throw because the down throw will definitely set you up for combinations at middle percentages. But at the high percentages, the knockback was so much that you couldn't follow up on it and you weren't able to get extra hits in. And because of that, now you've surrendered a little bit more damage, but it doesn't matter. Either way, the Banjo comes back and gets uh, thrown off stage. It'll be Raymond with a quick answer. Cash. 
Just not able to. It was that one mistake, unfortunately, that threw them off in this game. So maybe you got to think, you know, maybe that one mistake, things could have been different. Maybe you could have taken it with uh, ease. But Raymond now putting them in a situation where you win a game and you win the championship. Mm -hmm. And that's a big part about it. I I also feel, though, you're not going to get that nice of a stage. The final destination, I think, really harmed Cash. Uh, you yep. saw the ability to utilize that extra spacing. Normally, when you're throwing projectiles, you can land a little bit higher, and you can try and like stay away from everyone, reset your jumps as well, get a, a, even further up. This time around, you didn't. Whenever you throw two projectiles, you're kind of out of the jumps, and all of a sudden, Sephiroth is on you, and it becomes a problem. So, very well played. I think from Raymond's end, understanding the weaknesses and strengths of both characters, saying, hey, I want to adjust, you have to try and do it again, but without any, I want to say, extra chances to have a straight, flat platform. So I'm very interested to see how this game three, or this, uh, yeah, this round three of the games, I don't know, at this point I'm just calling stuff out on my butt, but <laughs> I, I want to see Raymond have a really good start on a platformed stage, because... If my guess is going to be correct, I'm assuming we go back to town and city. Yeah, I agree. And that's because you've had that success. Unless there's not uh, Dave's stupid role, I think it's called. <laughs> um, where you can't go back to the one that you originally won. I don't believe that's in play. So we might see town. If that's the case, then we definitely see town in my eyes. It, it very much played in their favor. Cash had an excellent game one in this set. And so I expect nothing less for them to go back to it. I also expect no character changes whatsoever here. Uh, both have had and found success no matter where they are. And if I'm, um, if I'm, cash right now even though raymond won the last one you still felt very confident in what you're able to accomplish there even though there's some momentum going i don't i don't see a switch here do you mm -mm. nope i i don't at this yeah. point they are their mains i don't think you want to change it up i think you want to keep the same both players have found options as sephiroth was very strong in getting those combos down the long reach really helped extend over the coconuts and at the same time the banjo kazooie had its bright moments you go ahead and say the side smash works you had the glorious moments you also have the opportunity to kind of reset get a breather if you want to throw the coconuts a little bit more i don't see either player really switching off and saying i have to change anything at this point it feels more just straight up mechanics you have to be better than your opponent you have to not let the mental disturbances of this is uh, you know game three in this series of a best of five and if i lose this we're out by cash and for raymond you're playing a little bit uh, nicer so i think we'll see the exact same matchup i just hope to see different styles to come out here and also not as many mistakes you can't be giving stocks over for free that's right that was literally the the difference between you see it came down to one stock at the very end um cash wasn't able to get it done then but the the thing is like the side smash is still working it didn't work as much as in that game one so i'm still like lingering on that right can cash make an additional adjustment just uh, you know, even more so than they did show some different looks. Don't get me wrong, but they they still were very much reliant upon that in order to get a kill confirm. And I I don't necessarily think that that's something that you can rely on again here in this one. So that's my only real fear for Cash. I think everything else, uh, the more balanced style of play was still perfectly fine. But you're right. I mean, you highlighted it best. If you if you give away stock for free at this level, when you see all these players in the finals and how well they're able to play their character, that's just something that can't happen if you want to win. Just plain and simple. All right. Well, now we're getting right back into it. Oh my gosh! Really? That is. Back to it. Wow. That, that is surprising. That is surprising that Cash actually opted for that. Yeah, to go right back to Final Destination after you just lost on it is interesting. But is it a statement piece? I mean, hey, listen, I know I can beat you here. Mm -hmm. And I already like the uh, early run into that physicality, trying to get a little bit closer. The coconuts are only really there to try and create a little bit of space opportunistic or a little bit of an ideal state to be in, keeping that Sephiroth in a dangerous spot. But look at that smart move, not chasing in, which is what Raymond has done before. Make sure to understand the distance limitations and say, hey, okay, I'm not going to let that hit. I'm not going to let that connect. I'm going to play smart. I'm going to get the damage. And you read it again, the reliance from Cash on this smash is starting to eat away at them yeah oh yeah raymond's finding that distance to find the point the sword at the very tail end of it as well to make sure that you're getting Great the job. most bang for your buck has been awesome again that spacing right even though, though you're on the ledge you pull back your di in order to get to a place where you get that most damage look at the 130 already orbital and we say oh. that and we've also seen uh cash break through and at the same there time, I, I think this is a read of read. Sephiroth, the mastermind with Raymond on the pilot, feels so much in control of this first stock. 
Yeah, and that's one of the biggest reasons why is because they've been able to capitalize on the side smash, this, which is clearly the tendency that we've seen from Cash. It worked in game one, but now you're seeing the adjustments to it. That's what makes Raymond, in my eyes, becoming uh, such a strong player. I know it's the first time I've seen Raymond, but it seems like I'm getting to know and love the adjustments they've been able to make on that side B alone in order to get around it and take that first stock here. And it feels like they need to take the stock here if you're Cash, but nothing doing here right back into the hands of Raymond and that's gonna be the big shift another grab though and this has actually been his favorite of cash you saw him try and go for it earlier but missing the up tilt before so I, I actually really like this but look at that counter slapping cash out of that hold and it hurts a little bit you lost that jump before oh, no and it's another stock loss all of a sudden things are looking dire and this allows Raymond to just go ham and if your chamber is for E-Trojans right now, uh, you got a little bit of a celebration on your brain. Obviously, you got to close out, but right now you're this close to a championship. One stock away from it, and that's going to be a good throw landed too. A combination pushed them up to 60%, and they used... Oh, man, they used a double jump there, too, and almost got hit off of it, but they're able to recover just to keep their chances alive. But it seems like it's any time now that they're going to be able to take it. A little bit more damage taken back, though. And now the charge off the 94% now and still a stock ahead, Ooh. Orbital. That grab, though, might be enough to kind of drop a hitch in the play. And remember, oh, this man. is Raymond. You can't get antsy. You know what happens when you get antsy. You get responded to by that shoulder check. And it's such a dangerous game to play. This is what Cash is going to look for. A little bit of a setup. Neutral air. Not really going nice. to land. Good 20%. And then some bombs coming out here. And just trying to keep him at bay. And it's actually racking up pretty quickly. 40% and then some. This is kill threat, by the way. This is lethal. This is a dangerous spot to be in. Same with the 111, of course. But that is going to be all the for. That's a charge. Be broken out. And you no. misdirect. A misinput sends Cash off the wrong edge. And it's Chambersburg E Trojans to take the grand finals oh that's unbelievable oh man and i again credit where i thought the cash was doing such an outstanding job to work back in that last stock the timing on the shield is perfect they ditched uh the very obvious pick of the side smash that they used so many times they they utilize different uh parts of the moveset of banjo and kazuri and then we talked about how mistakes might make the difference. And unfortunately for CMHS Evil, that was the case. It'll be a 3-0 in sets one. Chamber two, it does not take away from anything that Chambersburg e Trojans were able to do throughout the entirety of this match. Well played. Insane finals from them. GG's all around. It just, you wish something went different a little bit towards the end. But it's still, congratulations, Chambersburg. Definitely well earned in, in GG's. Mm -hmm. And I would give a lot of praise over to Esmond. Starting things off with a dub, I think, is, is something that can be quite difficult. Especially when you don't really know who you're playing against and you know some of the other stronger members. You have to start up strong, especially in this format. The first game really sets the tone for the rest. Picking things up to a pretty quick pace. The inkling really saying, hey, we're going to play fast. We're going to get in your face. Drawing out maybe one of the best players on the other side, I think is very impressive by their own right. Agreed. And... Is CMHS Evil will build back stronger and we'll look to get to the finals the next time around here. But until then, the Pennsylvania Principals Association champions are Chambersburg E Trojans. We appreciate everybody for tuning in here for this finals. A big thank you goes out to the production team, including Blasky behind the scenes, always holding things down, as well as the entirety of the play versus admin team and everybody else running it in the PPA as well and uh providing such a great place and environment for these players to play in for all the parents uh, that are supporting of your students too the grassroots does not work unless you are there supporting and that means the world to all the players and everybody involved in this esports space as well so thank you everybody and until next time orbital and bear light here with you we appreciate you and we'll see you later take care